Hello YouTube, Blue Matona here, and welcome to this episode of Game Guides, where I will be talking about gold in Civilization V. So this is going to be a three-part sort of mini-series of episodes, just because there's a lot that has to do with gold in this game. So first here, we're going to just look at the income. So just what you see in green here on the screen, the gold that you're making every turn. We're going to look at the ways to basically just gain more gold income as the game progresses. The second video is going to look at the expenses, and then the third is going to be how to balance the two throughout the course of the game so that you're never losing money. So if you like this video, you know, please leave, drop a like, comment, favorite, or subscribe. It really helps my channel grow. And without further ado, we're going to look into this. So the first thing we're going to talk about is the most basic of all the ways to get gold in this game. And that's basically to look at your cities and just see what their gold output is right here. So here, if you mouse over it, it will tell you exactly what contributes to the gold output of the city. So you see you get some from terrain, some from buildings, some from specialists, and then there's city modifiers. And that gives you the end result of, in this case, 177.54 gold every single turn. So we're going to go ahead and open this to this in management, and we're going to look here at what's contributing gold. So first, we're going to look at tiles. As you can see, this tile here is producing a lot of gold. C tiles produce some gold here, they're producing four each, and we have a tile in here that has four going, what, what is that tile, that, that should be something, yes, yeah, so there's a trading post there, so yeah, so basically you're going to want to work tiles that produce gold, this, a lot of times this will help if you're, near, if you're near a river, if you're near the water, water tiles, here we'll turn on resource icons, water tile. oh, not that one, my bad, yield icons, water tiles will oftentimes produce gold, um, especially, yeah, if there's these uh, resources on them. So pearls here are producing a lot of gold each, which is really nice. So that's going to be one main way. As you can see, usually hills, especially places that have, you know, like here's some, let's look at some of the resource icons, like marble here produces fast five gold. Um, and then also trading posts are going to be a really important tile upgrade to build if you need gold and your workers will build those trading posts, is that they'll boost your gold for the tile. You know, this actual gold resource here is producing five gold every turn, so that stuff really does add up. But working tiles isn't gonna get you enough gold to succeed. You need to complement that by buildings and by specialists. So we're gonna look here, there's two types of buildings that can really contribute to your gold. Um, let me go down to where the buildings are. So in the first type of building is just going to be a base one that gets you gold. So let's find one here. I don't know if I'm... Is hydro plant? No, it costs gold. Where are they? Well, maybe it's up in specialist buildings. Okay, so like bank, for instance. Gold, not only does it give you plus two gold every turn, but it's also giving you a plus 25% gold modifier. So that's pretty important. Also, since it's a specialist building, if I were to put a specialist in here, as you can see, they would get me two more gold every turn. Now, other things like markets, plus one gold and 25%, stock exchange, plus 25% and three. Um, you know, all these types of buildings contribute to gold. So if you're trying to up your gold, definitely going through your research and getting to the point where you can build markets, stock exchanges, banks, those types of buildings are really going to help with each city's gold output. Okay, so the second major way here that we can get gold in this game is we're going to look at city connections between my cities and the capital city. So this is very simple to do. To get gold, you are going to look at, sorry, you're going to have to find the city. So here, let's look at Heliopolis and my capital Thebes. And we have this road here that's connecting the two cities. And as you can see, this little icon here means there's a city connection with the capital. And when that city connection is there, that will start producing gold based on the number of citizens. So if we go here into the economic overview, we can look at city connections right here under income. And we'll click that. And we were looking at Heliopolis, so 27.35. And that's because I have 21 citizens and I get 1.1 gold per citizen. So that's how that modifier works. You get 1.1 gold per citizen, and that's what makes that's how it decides how much gold you get from a city connection. Now, this might just a word of warning. This might not be good to do early in the game because roads do cost one tile of up, sorry, one gold of upkeep every turn. 
So sometimes in the early game when city populations are low, it would actually be more expensive to build a road to the city than the benefits of having the uh, connection and the gold that you get from the connection. So that one's pretty straightforward. You know, as you can see, all my cities are connected here. You see the little icons beneath every single one of them. And that's because I have this road network or now railroad network going throughout my empire that can all connects back to my capital. And last little point on that, to connect a city that is on an island here like Giza, you need to build a port in the city and then a port in a city here that is connected to the capital via a road. So I have a port here, as you can see in Alexandria, and a port, as you can see right here in Giza. And because Alexandria is connected to my capital by a road, that means that Giza also gets this um, city connection to the capital. Now, if the capital was on the water, then the capital would only need a port. You wouldn't need a port in other cities. So that pretty much is all to do with city connections. And that's that's all really there. So now what's up? Okay, trade routes. So trade routes are very important. I believe I can see these, yeah, trade route overview. So I have some trade routes that I do with other civilizations. As you can see here from Memphis, I have a trade route with the city-state Sophia that generates me about 15 gold every single turn. Which, so that's very beneficial. Now, as you can see, trade routes do more than just gold. There's You could trade science and then food and production for your city. So I have my capital Thebes with a trade route of one of my cities giving it food every turn because Pyramansis, or Ramasis is up here in the desert and is having a lot of trouble with food. So that's why I did that trade route. But as you can see, I am gaining a lot of gold here every single turn from my trade routes. Well, yeah, I'm gaining 102 with these trade routes. I have eight of them, seven of them get me gold, and then that one just gets me food. So it's definitely another way that you can really make a lot of money. As you can see, you need caravans, caravans to get that. So train up your caravans, keep your trade routes going, and you can also, from a port city, have a uh, cargo ship. I believe this is a yeah Ethiopian cargo ship right here, and that will give you a trade route too. And they have more range than the land caravans, but this game, my, I was, my uh, cargo ships kept getting raided by pirates, which destroys them, so I stuck to just land caravans. Um, okay, so now we're going to look at religion and social policies. So let's look at social policies first. Now, obviously, if you're trying to make money, the best social policy to take is commerce. Not only does this give you a plus 25% gold in your capital city immediately, it unlocks the building of Big Ben, which, let's see if I built Big Ben, because, okay, I did which gives you plus four gold, and the cost of gold purchasing in all cities is reduced by 15%. So it's a pretty good uh, tile, you know, if you're looking for uh, gold production. But not only that, but the things in commerce, like here, plus two gold from every single land trade route, and maintenance on roads and railroads reduced by 50%, I mean, that is huge and the importance. Great merchants earned quicker, um, you get more money from their missions, Purchasing items in cities are cheaper, and you get science from every single gold-producing building you build, basically. Um, and then when you finish it, you get plus one gold from every trading post, which is huge because, you know, as you can see here, these trading posts, if we turn on, once again, yield icons, wherever I have trading posts, I mean, it's making me four gold every turn. So that's, that's very substantial. Um, so yeah, that, I mean, definitely social policies have a, are very good for this. And then there are other ones too, like plus one gold from science buildings. You know, there are others that are scattered throughout. I think there's one here. Um, maybe, oh yeah, well, here, cost of upgrading military units reduced. So, I mean, there are other things in social policies that help, but clearly commerce is the main one that will get you gold. And then ideological tenants as well. Let's see if I took any here that have to do with gold. I actually didn't, but I know there are ideological tenants that boost your gold, so it's definitely important. Uh, important to look into that. Um, okay, next we're here, we're going to look at religion. So as you can see here, religion, I get plus one gold for every four followers of the religion. Um, and that's just the one that I have adopted. So there are plenty of other beliefs, plus two gold for each city following this religion, um, plus 100 gold when each city first converts to this religion. Yeah, so there are a lot of things you can do for gold, plus one gold for every four followers of this religion. That's the one I took. Um, and that really helps with gold, and as you can see, just from that, I'm getting 53 gold from religion, just because I have a lot of followers. And the last thing that you can do, which I don't have any going right now, but as you can see, I have in my expenses is, it says two to other civilizations. 
You can also gain money from trade with other civilizations. It's just I am not right now. But let's go ahead and look at someone who's actually friendly with me, like England. And we're going to go ahead and click on them. And let's go ahead and trade. So they have 50 gold per turn. I have 41 gold per turn. Now I can sell a luxury resource or strategic resources for gold. So let's say I have a lot of oil. I'll give you 5 oil if you give me you know, 15 gold a turn. That's proposed. No, they're not going to do it. See, they, they want a lot. The, the computer is kind of annoying. But like, let's say I just need a little bit of gold. I want 7 gold per turn for the 5 oil. No. Okay, 2 horses and 5 oil for 8 gold a turn. So I can do that. I hit accept. Back. Let's get out of here. And as you can see now, I have 6 or six from other civilizations. So that's the gold now I'm getting every turn from other civilizations. She's giving me 8, but it's minus 2 because of the 2 total expenses I had before. So now I'm getting six gold from every from civilizations, and you you can trade with them. From my experience, they'll usually give you I think let's go into Greece here seven if you give them a luxury resource, maybe eight, maybe six. It kind of just depends how fickle they're getting. Yeah, so he took seven, and you can do as basically as many trades with this as you want. Trade your extra resources, or you can just demand a single payment from them too. So let's go back to Elizabeth here, and we'll hit trade. And let's say I want to give her spices. Oh, I need a declaration of friendship. You need a declaration of friendship to do it. But once you have a declaration of friendship, then they can just give you a cash payment. It doesn't have to be gold per turn. So th those are the ways that you can manage gold in this game. And there's a lot you can do to do it. And, and you know, as the game goes on, you'll do better. So, yeah, if you enjoyed this video, guys, please like, favorite, comment, and subscribe. I really appreciate it. And keep an eye out for the next two videos in this set. If you want to learn about total expenses and how to minimize your expenses in this game, and also if you want to learn about how to balance the two in every era that you move through. So thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed this video. And as always, I hope to see you all next time.